what's going on everybody welcome back to this video uh, welcome back to another video I should say not back um, in this episode I'm going to be making another discussion on something that has been on my mind for a while since since Smackdown Live because my buddy King Schmidt mentioned that uh, the iconic duo Billy Kay and Peyton Royce were meant to be on Smackdown uh, this past week, last week, because it's now officially Monday here in Australia. Um, so, yeah, this is what my discussion is going to be about. Um, my discussion is going to be uh, something that kind of crossed my mind when he mentioned that they could have shown up uh, in Charlotte's promo. Now, something that crossed my mind about that now we don't know for sure if they would have came out beat up charlotte or if they came out to an organic reaction and it helped her fight with the right spot but i would have been okay with them having her i would have been okay with it if they came out and helped charlotte with the iconic duo because i think a lot of people would have liked that so this discussion is going to be about me talking why i believe Billy Kay and Peyton Royce should become babyfaces when they hit the main roster. Because they've done everything they needed to be as heels. And I'm going to be discussing more why I'm not a fan of what's been going on with them on NXT. Because you know I've been pretty vocal about NXT. Now I know there's a lot of people out there who defend NXT, who love NXT... And will say anything to, to try and keep NXT's popularity there. I'm here. I'm not here to expose NXT. But I'm here to pretty much expose what I think of what NXT has been doing. With Billy Kay and Peyton Royce. That hasn't made me really enjoy uh, their run in NXT. I just really haven't been a fan of what they've been doing on NXT. You know, and it's not their fault. It's not their fault. I'm not blaming them, but it's the uh, booking and, and all that shit. So yeah, I'm gonna be talking about that. I'm gonna be talking about this on this video, and let's get to the discussion. <clears throat> I'll change the shirt because the shirt I I put on a few minutes ago was a bit too tight on me. A bit too tight on me. So let's get on with the discussion now. Now, this is going to be me talking directly on NXT, so so please, guys, this does have a lot to do with the discussion, so don't think I'm going to be ranting about what's been going on on NXT for them. It doesn't have anything to do with the discussion. I believe it does. I believe it does. So, from what I've known, from what I've known, from what I've been watching on NXT, look, Oh, and also, before I get on with the discussion, guys, I've actually just woke up not so long ago. So, I've been, you know, been resting for a couple of minutes just to wake myself up. I'm doing a few things just to wake myself up. So, please excuse me. If I look a little, if I look a little, if I look a little, you know, by the eyes, I look like I've just woken up. So, so just be aware of that. And also, my brain might not work as much, so I might not have any everything I need to say on this video. Uh, for, but from Peyton Royce and Billy Kay, they've been in NXT since 2015, I believe. They're 15 or 16. One of the two years they've been in there since then. I believe it was 16. But they've been in NXT for quite a few years now, and their time in NXT has come to an end. I believe them coming up as baby faces on SmackDown Live would be great. And of course, you will know why I mean that. And I don't want people telling me, oh, they should be heels. No, SmackDown need faces. SmackDown need faces. Bringing Billy Kay and Peyton up as faces would be better for their division. It'd be better for their division, regardless if you think what they've been doing as heels is good. I'm going to tell you something, and this is something that's really been annoying me. Not with their gimmick, it's just how they've been booked in NXT. That, if you look at people who have managers, if you look at people who have managers or ha or, or that are a tag team, and when they're in one-on-one -on -one matches, the, the one that doesn't wrestle 
normally stands on the outside. Now, the thing that I hate, I don't hate this about Billy Kane Page and Royce. It's just, but it's just how I believe how they've been booked. Now, if you think I'm saying I hate them, of course I don't hate them. They're Australians. Why would I hate my own Australians? But I'm saying when I say what I hate about them is not what I'm saying, oh, there's a flaw I don't like about them. I'm saying there's a thing that WWE have them do that just really annoys me. It's not, I'm not blaming it on them. It's I'm blaming it on uh, Triple H because he runs NXT. I'm not saying Vince because Vince, like, like Vince, would, would like Vince would book NXT. If he, if Vince McMahon was to book NXT, Eva Marie probably would have beaten Bailey for the NXT Women's Championship, and also Eva Marie would have been the first person to beat Oscar. Think about that if Vince McMahon ran NXT. But since it's Triple H, we know that's not going to happen with anybody. But Triple H runs NXT along with William Regal, and the thing that I hate that Triple H does is that even though Billy Kay and Peyton Royce are meant to be heels, that he makes them look like chumps. He makes them look like chumps. Because every time they're in a one-on-one -on -one match, and it's like I'm watching the main roster. It's like I'm watching bloody it's like I'm watching a bloody Jinder Mahal match. Like either Billy Kay or Peyton Royce, depending on which one's wrestling, the other one gets up on the apron just to try and get an interference in, and then they get knocked off the apron. And then the one that's wrestling ends up getting pinned. That, 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 that's how, that, that, that's what happens. When they interfere, they end up losing. It's like, and how does this make any sense at all? How does this make any sense at all? That, that, that they try to help each other, but they still end up losing. If I was, if I, if, if Triple, if I was in the body and the mind of Billy Kay and Peyton Royce, and if Triple H told me that to my, to my face, I'd be telling him, wait, how does that make any sense? How am I supposed to help my friend win if, she's, if I'm just going to get knocked off the apron and, I'm gonna, and she's going to lose anyway? And, and that's the thing that I really didn't like. I don't mind if you have them in a tag team match and dominate like they did with Liv Morgan and Aaliyah. That makes perfect sense because they're a team. That's what they're meant to do. But if you're going to have them in one-on-one -on -one matches, at least make them look good. At least make them look decent when they win. Because the, the, the way they have them win, the way they have them win as heels, it's like your typical heel. Well, the way they book them. The way they book them is like your typical heels. And I hate typical heels. They, they interfere. Then they, they try to interfere. And 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 then, then the, and then, but in the end, the iconic duo still lose. Gee, that reminds me a lot of Jinder Mahal. But instead, the role is reversed. They get on the apron and they help Jinder Mahal win. Because that's what he, that's what that's what typical heels are for. But the reason why I'm still calling Billy Kane and Peyton Royce typical heels because that's what typical heels do. They get up, they get up and try to help their partner. They get up and they try and help their partner. It's like what Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens do. They try to help their partner. But sure, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn, when they do it, it makes sense because it's part of the storyline. But I'm saying, typical heels always have someone to have their back. I'm not saying break up the iconic duo. I'm not saying that at all. What I'm saying is that if they come into SmackDown as babyfaces, they won't interfere. They won't interfere in matches. The one that doesn't wrestle will just do that typical babyface thing. Like if Peyton Royce, let's I'll just give give you an example in case if you're just friggin' all over the place. Say Peyton Royce is wrestling and Billy Kay is on the outside. We'll use this as NXT first. Peyton Royce is wrestling, Billy Kay is on the outside. Peyton Royce is losing, Billy Kay would get on the apron, but the person that's fighting Peyton Royce would just knock her off the apron, and then she'd do her finishing, and then maybe a couple of moments later she'd get her finishing move on, on Peyton Royce and beat them. That, that, that's a typical way, that's a typical heel move, and that's just a stupid way to make Peyton lose. It, it's, it's so bloody stupid. It's so bloody stupid how to make somebody lose. Because if someone's on the ap apron for providing a distraction, that should lead into that person getting a win. 
But with it happening every single time, with it happening every single match, with either Billy Kay or Peyton Royce wrestling, and it happens every single match. They interfere in every single match, and they end up losing every single match in that typical situation. How am I supposed to take them seriously if something like that is supposed to happen? How am I supposed to make them look like legit heels if they get treated like that? I don't, I, I just don't like it. I just don't like it. They're called the iconic duo. I get it. They're friends. And I know that. I'm not dumb. I'm not dumb. I know they're friends. But do they really have to interfere in every single match? Look at Zelina Vega. She interfered in freaking Andre Cien Almas' match with Drew McIntyre. You think that makes sense? You think you're just going to sit there with a straight face and say, Yeah, that was good. You can't sit there with a straight face telling me you actually liked Zelina Vega getting involved in Drew McIntyre's match with Andre Cien Almas. Because, oh, because you know what? I've been hearing a lot of people say how much they were actually okay with Andre Cien Almas winning the way that he did with Zelina Vega interfering. Uh, you, this just shows you that you're a hypocrite. This just shows you you're a hypocrite. To me, it shows that you are a hypocrite. You hate it when the main roster do it, but you're okay with it when NXT does it. I'm sorry, but if you're going to just sit there and say, Oh, I love the fact that Zelina Vega got involved helping Andre Cien Almas. But then when you watch the main roster, you, you, you throw your pencils and, and you've and you got your microphone in front of your face and you're screaming and yelling through the microphone just to... Get out your frustrations about how much you don't like it. Shut up. Just shut up, okay? You either you either like it or you hate it. You can't just hate it on the main roster and like it on NXT. You can't. I call that your being a hypocrite. I call that a hypocritical move. You're being a hypocrite. You're sucking up to NXT. You're eating up all that NXT bullshit that they give you. You, you eat up everything NXT give you and you accept it like it's a it's like it's a new fresh cake It's like a new fresh cake that's come out of the oven and you will eat it all and you will eat it all up Even though there is something about that cake Even though there's one thing in that cake You know that you have seen before but you will eat it anyway Look at the Miz when he was intercontinental champion he had interferences of, of, of both Dallas and Curtis Axel and Maurice. Were you people okay with that? No. You weren't okay with that. You weren't okay with that. We all hated it when it was Jinder Mahal. We all hated it with Jinder Mahal. So you can't tell me that you were okay with Selena Vega. Now, I know this is completely off topic, but I'm just trying to explain that with that Billy and Peyton were doing the exact same thing. They were interfering in every match. But instead, them interfering would still cause them to lose. How is it that they can interfere, but they can't get away with cheap victories? But every time they do, they look weak. They look weak when they get that cheap victory. I'm telling you guys. I'm telling you guys right now. I'm just not a fan of how they were booked in NXT. I just refused to like how they were booked in NXT. I will always like my iconic duo, but I just cannot accept. Oh my god, give me a sec. Sorry about that, I had a very rude girlfriend interrupting me, calling me in the middle of recording. Never mind that. Let's get back on topic. Um, what 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 was what was I saying? Oh yeah. Oh, what I'm trying to say is is that Billy Kay and Peter Royce, when they interfere, they still end up losing. So why is it okay for someone like Zelina Vega to interfere, and it's okay for people to accept? I don't get it. I don't get it. I just do not get the politics on NXT. The fans are so freaking stupid that. 
something that they see on the main roster is right in their face, and they're just okay with it. Um, I'm sick of it. I really am sick of the NXT favoritism. I'm sick of the NXT favoritism. I am sick of it. Very, very sick of it. So what I'm trying to say, guys, is that Billy Kay and Peyton Royce need to be baby faces when they come up to the main roster. Because I, I, I'm tired of the interferences and they still lose. I'm tired of it. I'm just tired of them interfering and they still lose. It's just so typical. It's just typical heel shit. And, and, and people don't seem to know what I'm on about when it comes to NXT. It's typical bullshit. They interfere, they still lose. It's just so stupid. To me, it's just so damn stupid. Sure, sure some people might say, oh, but... It, but sure, there might be some NXT fanboys and fangirls out there saying, oh, but it's, it's a good way to tell the story. That they're trying to cheat. And, and the babyface overcomes the odds. Yeah, the babyface overcomes the odds every single week, right? Having the iconic duo interfere every single time they wrestle in a one-on-one -on -one match. Yeah, that's great storytelling that the, that the babyface is overcoming the odds. That's a great example. Gee, I wish Shinsuke Nakamura overca overcame the Singh brothers and Jinder Mahal! Gee, I sure, I wish, gee, I sure would have loved that. You know, I don't care what anybody has to tell me if they think it's okay for the Iconic Duo to interfere every single match. I'm not buying into any of your bullshit. I'm not buying into any of your bullshit. If you give me a legit reason why I should be okay with it, I shouldn't be, I shouldn't be accepting it at all. I don't like people interfering. and I don't like it when people interfere. Sure, I love Billy Kay and Peyton Royce, but the problem is I would be okay with it if they interfered casually, if they interfered casually in matches. But do you really need a manager or a friend on the outside trying to help you in every single match? No, you don't need them interfering in every single match. I don't want them interfering in every single match. To me, it just looks repetitive and it just looks boring. It looks it looks like it's just copy and paste of Billy Kay and Peyton Royce on NXT. And the one thing I was happy about when they were at war games, is that Peyton fought by herself. Billy Kay didn't come out and help her. I give thumbs up to that. That's what I want more of. I want more of Billy Kay and Peyton Royce fighting their own battles. Just because they're heels does not mean they have to have have the, each other's back. I want them to fight on their own. I want them to look good. I want them to look believable. As future contenders. And the other thing that I really didn't like about is that when they debuted uh, when they debuted on the on the on the USA network, that even though they didn't show the match on the USA network, that Ember Moon and Peyton Royce had a match. And I am not dumb guys. I'm not dumb. WW.com helps me a lot when I don't watch NXT. I read the article on their match. I believe, I believe it was somewhere last year. I can't really remember for sure. But, yeah, I think it was last year. But, um, on the article it said that William, Peyton Royce said that she wants a match with Ember Moon for the title. And then William Regal stated that if you, beat, if you beat Ember Moon, you get your championship match. Which obviously, which, ob which obviously Peyton Royce ended up losing. But then all of a sudden, Billy Kay and Peyton Royce are both ganging up on Ember Moon, and it leads Nikki Cross to come out. It leads Nikki Cross to come out and, and to and, and to flee off the iconic duo. Okay, what? Well, okay, why is Nikki Cross interfering in other people's business? I don't get that. Why is Nikki Cross now all of a sudden just helping out? I thought she was a heel. I thought she was a heel. Whatever. Whatever. But the other thing I'm trying to say is is that this is obviously leading into a Peyton Royce and a, a Peyton, a, an iconic duo versus Ember Moon rivalry. And this is what I didn't understand. That William Regal said to Peyton, you got to beat Ember Moon to get yourself a championship opportunity. 
But now, but now they're just putting them in a rivalry with Ember Moon anyway. Why does that make any sense? Why does that make any sense? Why does it make sense that they're now feuding with Ember Moon, even though William Regal specifically said, you have to beat Ember Moon. She didn't beat Ember Moon. So she shouldn't be feuding with them anyway. But of course, but it's NXT. NXT makes zero sense. This is what I'm trying to explain to you. But no one's going to listen to me. Everybody thinks I'm just a being a whiny, bitchy, bitchy Australian that just doesn't like seeing his Australians lose. I want my Australians to look good. I want my Australians to succeed. I don't want to look at them like Emma. I don't want to look at them like Emma. Emma was a fail. It was a big epic fail. And it's not, it wasn't Emma's fault. It wasn't Emma's fault. I don't want to look at the iconic duo as iconic jobbers or iconic losers. I don't want to look at them as losers or jobbers. I want to look at them as champions who have a bright future. This is the one major thing I have an issue with NXT. Love your NXT. Praise your NXT all you want. But I know the true facts behind NXT. And if you can't accept it, then that proves to me that you're just a fanboy that will just that will just eat any piece of cake and eat it up. And eat it up like a true fan. And does this have anything to do with what I'm trying to explain to you with this discussion? Yes, it does. Don't think I'm just sitting here bitching and it doesn't have anything to do with the discussion. It does have a lot to do with this discussion. This is why I titled it, Why Should Billy Kay and Peyton Royce Turn Face When They're On The Main Roster? Because everything I'm explaining to you guys now, hear about them on NXT, is not what I want from them. It's not what I want from them. I will love people to tell me how many wins have they secured on NXT. And I know for a fact they would have more losses than wins. I want them to have a bright future with success. Sure, people might enjoy their work in NXT, but, but you got to understand... Wins and losses mean a lot. Wins and losses mean a lot in the professional wrestling world. Sure, some people might disagree, but but I believe but I believe wins and losses ma mean a lot. So yes, I believe Billy Kay and Peyton Royce when they come up to SmackDown Live, which is where they need to be. SmackDown Live is where they need to be. When they come up to SmackDown Live, they need to be faces. No ifs, no buts. They need to be face. If Bobby Roode can randomly turn face when he arrived on SmackDown Live, so can Billy Kay and Peyton Royce. They can, they can make their main roster debut in the Royal Rumble match and eliminate the Riot Squad. That's how I would have them turn face. Had them eliminate the Riot Squad. The three girls that... The, the three girls that everybody hates on SmackDown Live. Hey, if Sheamus and Cesaro can eliminate all three members of the New Day at once, I'm pretty damn sure the iconic duo can, can eliminate all three members of the Riot Squad by themselves. Two on three. Anyway, that's the end of this video. I hope my point has gotten across and I hope people understand where I am coming from I believe Billy Kay and Peyton Royce need to be faces when they come up to the main roster whether if you disagree with me or not but of course you have to disagree with me because why do you want more more heels on, on Smackdown Live why do you want more heels on Smackdown Live Billy Kay and Peyton Royce are the perfect faces for Smackdown Live and it may be a future face turn with Natalia down the line. But anyway, that's the end of this video. Hit that like button if you enjoyed. Comment down below your thoughts. 
on everything I just ex I, I was talking about. Subscribe if you're new and hit the bell so that way you'll know that way you know you that way you will know that I've ah, getting my words wrong. So then you will be notified that I uploaded a video. Jeez. See you guys next time.